I'm going to have a look at a bit of Macbeth revision now. And we're looking at the characters. We have our protagonist, Macbeth. Um, he's initially loyal, a Scottish nobleman. He's a brave warrior. However, his ambition and the influence of the supernatural forces in the play lead him to commit regicide and descend into madness. And the quote that I've chosen for him is, I am in blood, steeped in so far that should I wade no more, returning were as tedious as go over. So the explanation for this is from Act 3, Scene 4. And Macbeth is reflecting on the point of no return into his descent into tyranny and violence. He acknowledges that he is so deeply entangled in his own actions that there's no turning back now. He can't go back and be who he was before. Lady Macbeth is Macbeth's ambitious and manipulative wife. She plays a crucial role in goading her husband to seize power and is haunted by guilt as the consequences of their actions unfold. And the quote that I've chosen for her is a very famous one from Act 5, Scene 1. Out, damn spot, out, I say. Here she's sleepwalking and she's tormented by guilt. She's obsessively trying to get rid of these imaginary bloodstains. This quote reveals her deteriorating mental health, mental state and her inability to escape the consequences of her actions. Here we have Duncan, who's the King of Scotland at the beginning of the play. He's a benevolent ruler and he's murdered by Macbeth um, as part of his quest for power right at the beginning of the play. And in Act 1, Scene 6, he says, This castle have a pleasant seat. The air nimbly and sweetly recommends itself unto our gentle senses. He, he is appreciating Macbeth's castle. He's trusting um, Macbeth. And this trust ultimately leads to his murder. So he's saying, what a beautiful place we're in. Um, and it doesn't go well for him. The next character we're looking at is um, Macduff, who is a Scottish nobleman and he's a loyalist. So he opposes Macbeth's rule. He becomes a key figure in the effort to overthrow Macbeth later on um, and restore order to Scotland. And the quote, Leon Macduff and damned be him that first cries hold enough. So this is a war cry from Act 5, Scene 8. Um, Macduff challenges Macbeth to a duel and expresses his determination to avenge the death of his friends and bring an end to Macbeth's tyranny. Lady Macduff is Macduff's wife who is brutally murdered along with her children by Macbeth's henchmen and uh, as part of his um, campaign to eliminate potential threats. And it's a really bad move on Macbeth's part. Um, Duncan's oldest son is Malcolm, so he's a legitimate heir to the Scottish throne. He flees to England to seek support and allies to help him to overthrow Macbeth. This quote is from Act 5, Scene 8, towards the end. What's more to do which would be worn in ceaseless iteration were, it, were now grown tedious as a twice-told tale? So him. Malcolm is reflecting on the need to restore order and repair the damage done by Macbeth's rule, acknowledging that the details of these atrocities has become wearisome. So if you hear this, if you hear these horrible things that have happened over and over again, people get bored. You just have to get on with repairing now. Uh, Donald Bain, which is a beautiful name, is Duncan's younger son. Like his brother, he flees Scotland after his father's murder to avoid being targeted by Macbeth. Banquo is um, a friend of Macbeth um, who also receives prophecies from the witches that his descendants will inherit the throne and that ultimately leads to his murder by Macbeth. The quote that I've chosen for Banquo is from Act 3, Scene 1. Thou hast it now. King, Cordor, Glamis, all, as the weird women promised, and I fear thou playedst most foully for it. So here Banquo is letting Macbeth know that he is a little bit suspicious about how Macbeth became king. So he's hearing about these newfound titles and he's expressing his suspicion of foul play. 
the three witches, the weird sisters, the weird women, um, these mysterious supernatural figures who deliver the prophecies to Macbeth and manipulate the course of events in the play. This was, you have to be aware, at a time where people believed in witches. So it's not that odd that they were that there were witches in this play. And right at the beginning, they're saying, fair is foul and foul is fair. In Act 1, Scene 1, um, this is their famous chant that sets the tone for the play, emphasising the theme of moral ambiguity and the inversions of values. We've got the porter, who's a minor character who provides comic relief in the play. It's quite a serious play, so we need a bit of that. Um, he serves as a gatekeeper at Mabes Castle, and he's a memorable scene in Act 2. Two. Then we have Hecate. So Hecate is the goddess of witchcraft who's often associated with the three witches. She scolds the witches for meddling in Macbeth's affairs. Macbeth's loyal servant, Satan, um, who remains with him even as Macbeth rules, becomes even more tyrannical. We have three Scottish noblemen here, Ross, Lennox and Angus. Um, who are supporters of King Duncan and later Malcolm, and they serve as messengers. And finally, we have the murderers, these unnamed characters who carry out Macbeth's orders to kill Banquo, Lady Macduff and the children. Um, Fleance is Banquo's son who escapes the murderers sent by Macbeth and is foretold to carry on Banquo's lineage. For more Shakespeare revision, subscribe to this channel there'll be new videos out every week and check out the playlists linked below